Hey, what's up, guys? Of course, it's me, Doc, from SampleKings.com. And so, in this video, I want to talk about the mixer output. Now, a lot of you guys have standalones, I get that, and you're forced to come onto a computer, your own computer at home, to use stems. You know, you're going to come into stems, and then you're on a computer here. Select the track you want to select here, let's say. You'll find a track you like. Right there, let's say this one here. I want to get stems. I'll press create stems, and now I can make stems of something that I have and get parts drums, vocals, and of course the music and uh, the bass. So that's kind of cool. But now that you're on here, you should check out the ability to master, or excuse me, to make your track ready by for pre master by making sure you got a good mix down. And so, what I'll normally do in this software is I will go right here. And I will use it, this thing right here, which is my mixer. Now, you may not realize it, but the MPC that you get that comes with a, the hardware, the standalone MPC itself is cool. But you also get the operating system for your computer. And the reason why I like this is because of this. I'll go to here right now. I'll pull this down. I can see all of my pads. I can also turn these pads off right here or turn them back on. These pads remain in sight for me to show. Okay, I want to go to this one. I want to go to this one. I want to go to this one over here. So I know where I'm going. I know what those samples are. And so that's kind of cool. I also can see the inserts for each one of these samples. Now, when I'm on my standalone, I don't see this kind of stuff. I don't want to go where, like for pad mix, each little section is like a little audio and then you see how loud it is it's red and so that's going to be that loud i can't even judge what's going on in there it's impossible for me to do that and use my ear that is totally nuts to me so the standard way they've been doing this for millions of years not really millions of years but for a long time is the fader obviously and so there's a fader right here up and down right and do your thing or the subgrouping i can send a sound here from subgroup over down to here to my subgroups pull this up here like this and I got subgroups right here. Now this is this way because I organized the structure of my mixer window. In your MPC, you've got to go to the channel mixer, then turn the little dial, get to the sub mixer, and then you want to put the stuff and send the sub mixer and see that back and add inserts. That's a lot of work to do just to do what I'm doing right here. And this is why I prefer to use the software. Now another reason why I do this also is because I want a decent output. Now for example, I come to here I'm going to turn these all on. This is the master output for my MPC software. And we got a track going on here. And I may like it, right? I want to get my drums right. I'm using my drums here to a separate output. I got my drums right here. So I've got this output. I've got my snare kick and hi-hat going there. Subgroup one, right? That's kind of cool. And that's why I use that, all right? I also have reverb here. So if I pull this down to here, I can add a reverb right here. And there's one through four returns and sends. I'm going to send one, send two, three or four. I send it. And it goes right to right here. This yellow section, this is reverb. This is delay. So I can see the entire mixer here. Now, once I get my song going on, I'd like to probably export the file. I'll come, I'll turn some stuff on here. Stuff on top. Turn this vocal off. Like this, get my mix right. <clears throat> Get a pad. That's not bad there. Some keys. I'm gonna pan a little like this. Pan a little bit here. Okay, I may like this mix, right? I got something going on here. So I like that. You'll notice here on my output right here, there's a king crown here and it says output one and two. 
Now, this means the output of all this audio, all these audio tracks going on, and this highway that's got stuff going all over the track is going to go right here in my summation amp. That's what that king crown means. Summation amp on a mixing board is where all these audio signals come to, and I come to here, and I can pull this down here, and we hear nothing. We're done, right? I'll drag this up a little bit more, and I want to get somewhere. I don't want it to go over zero. I don't want, I want to go right about zero here, right? I like this right here somewhat because I'm right in that space. See, I got plenty of space in here. Let me stop this. What's going on here is I have something on my master output. You will see this here on this side here. I've got a parametric EQ. I've got a limiter. I've got a uh, stereo width device, and I've got a maximizer here. Now, let's play it without the stuff on here. Look at my level here now. It's going up here a little bit, and it doesn't sound as loud, right? I'll turn this on. You can hear the difference with having this stuff on here. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm trying to establish the fact that I want to make this a little bit wider. I want to make a little punch a little more, right? I got my limiter in there, squeezing it out also with my maximizer, and I got my EQ set up. Now, what I'm doing here is creating a pre-mastering output. And so I say this plugin is that, or this is actually a rack effect. These are four different effects I have in a rack. And so I would come to here, for example, I may want to load this up after I've designed it. I will come to here, and I'm looking for, here it is, my pre-rack effects right there. I'll say load it on that track, right? And I want to go back to my mixer mirror. Where's my mixer at? My mixer should be right here. Here's my mixer right here. And you'll see it's right back up here. Let's play it again. Turn it off. So it's good to have this setup going on where you've got something that's going to give you that level, more punch to it, not go over the zero point, but have a decent enough sound. So now as I'm doing this, let's go over this here. This is my EQ at the very top. I'm using this uh, smiley EQ thing right here. I'm using effects that are already in the MPC. This is going to be a cool lesson because what's happening here Everything I'm going to show you right now has been set up for you already. Watch this. I'll go right to here, and you'll see this says initial. No, let's go to master. That's all this is. I went to right here and use that because I want to make this lesson easy for anyone to do. Now, I'll just say that's good to do, right? I want to go to my limiter. I put a limiter up. That's an init, right? I just designed a little bit for this thing to do my right thing, to do my thing to make it so it's tight or snappy either way. And what I do here, I just pull the standard one up here. I want to make sure I put the sucker up. I got some ceiling here, right? I'm not busting through the ceiling. I'm telling you, look, I got some gain, but we're not busting through the ceiling. We got that, and this is my setup for that. Stop that. I like when it comes back in. But you get the idea here. We're trying to limit it. I don't want to go over zero dB. I want to make sure if a place in a Jeep, the guy's not, oh, that's banging. I want to make sure if you got a cheap wax uh, speaker, no, a whack AM radio, no, FM radio, and someone wants to hear it on there or something, right? I want to make sure no matter what environment they're in, a uh, iPhone, an Android phone, in a dope Jeep, at a club somewhere, that when you turn it on, it's all the same. And it's important for that. We don't want to get above the headroom. So next, I'll turn this off of here. I'll close it out, actually. And I go to my next thing here. I like to within my sound up. Let's make it a little bit wider, right? So here I've got, this is the Air Studio Width. All right? This is the knit also. I'm just going to come in and do a, I'll put it like this little knit right here. This is the initial part that comes in. I didn't do much to trim it up here. I just got the low, the mid highs right here. Just up. These are all the same things. These are just our processes. And here we got the trim, right? And so we got level here. And we got my panning here too as well. It's good. I'll go down to here next. I'll go here to my maximizer. This is also mastering light. This is pretty simple. I come to here. This is mastering light. I select that. It's right here. This is an easy way for you to get your stuff ready for mastering, the pre-master situation. And it sounds pretty good. Now, I'll, I'll press play here. You'll see this. It's not. It look, it's saying, look, I'm not going there. The reduction's coming back. Well, no, I'm not going there. It's forcing it not to go above zero dB. I'll press stop here now. I'll close this window out. Now, that's done. I also want to see 
that this works. So for example, I've got some going over here. Let me turn this over here. I'll move that right there. And I'll see that right here, I've got it set up. Let's pull this down somewhat here. This is the output for the music. So right here, if I mute this, the drums are, are stopped. So all this music stuff is right here now. I can go way up on this thing. I'm going higher and higher and higher and higher. Notice it's not going above zero dB. Did you see that? You can always move the video back to where it was, but look at this. It didn't go over zero dB whatsoever. Now I'm going to put my drums back in. I like my drums to bounce. I'm a bouncy guy. I like drums. I can buy drums and go like, damn, what's that? I want to be in that Jeep with that guy turned up going like, <laughs> I don't even tell him it's my track. He'll be going like, that sounds fat, you know what I mean? Because I want to make sure my drums are the way I like them to have them, is the way I think of where it should be in a club. I like to have my drums big. I bring this subgroup right there. But notice this, though. It's not going up zero dB, but it's bouncing to that point. Now I'm going to pull the music in. It's right behind the beat, man, a little bit. Now you saw that. That's my pre-mastering setup thing. You can do it yourself. And once you get this going on, and you like what you've got going on, you come right to here, and you go to where it says insert, and you can just write, no, you just click, regular click right there. You can save it, right, I can come to here, and save rack effect into my MPC rack effects folder. You can get lessons from me on how to mix also, how to use this mixer in the MPC or with any musical software. I have them all. We know them all cold. You can see those videos also in the YouTube channel. But I'd love to have you support us as well by subscribing to my videos, uh, subscribing to the channel, actually, I mean, and also liking this video will help us greatly. Now, if you do need help, you can go right to SamuelKings.com. Let's go right there right now. I know a lot of you guys watch our videos. It's really cool, but we also do lessons. And I'm the guy that does all the lessons, of course. So you'll come to here, and you'll scroll down here at SampleKings.com, and you will see it says Sample Kings Book Lessons. To pay is just $16 an hour. And you can use Cash App, or you can use Venmo. The codes for them is right here. This is the code for Cash App. This is the code for Venmo. And if you want to use PayPal, it's pretty simple, too. This is PayPal here. If you need help, too, you can also call me. That's my number right there as well. Or you can send us an email, which is automatically right here. Click on this, send me an email. But let's go to the store. In the store, you can use PayPal. You can see it right here. We have Zoom lessons lined up here, depending on how many hours you want to go. Also, if you want to, you can come right in here and get 10-hour blocks or a 20-hour block, and then use the time as you go along which helps out also. So let's go back to where we're at right here. And once you've paid for your session, it's time for you to book your session. You come right here and we go here. You can select one hour, two hours. If we're mixing three or four hours, whatever you want to do, we can do that stuff too. No problem. If you want to do more than two hours, you can also combine it like this and that. You book like three hours or four hours. Best thing to do is probably buy a block. That way you can deduct your time, but it's simple. I come right to here. I select this. It takes me right here. I see over here on the left-hand side, two hours with Doc. Over here, you pick the time. Now, I'm currently in Tokyo. This is my Tokyo time thing here. But no matter where you are, I can get to you because you're over there in a the state somewhere. I'm still ahead of you. I'm 13 hours ahead of you. So I don't care if you got like 4 o'clock in the morning. It's still like daytime over here doing my thing. You know, so you come right here, for example. And let's say you want to book some time in your area and you want to do 4 o'clock. You come in at 4 o'clock, it books it, it says here Friday, blah, 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 4 to 6. It's pretty cool to do. You fill the information out, and all you got to do is go book it. That easy.